Question number 125 is a good review of almost every concept that was introduced in this chapter. You need to be able to interpret data to determine the order of the reaction from initial rates. You need to be able to interpret data that is uh, that shows the rate constant as a function of temperature in order to get the activation barrier, activation energy, and the pre-exponential factor. And then you need to use some of the data that you have in order to calculate the rate of the reaction at known concentrations of reactants. And then last of all, you're asked to calculate the half-life of the reaction. So although this is part B, I'm going to start with part B. We are given the temperature in Kelvin and we are given the rate constant as a function of temperature and in part B it wants us to determine what the activation barrier is and the pre-exponential factor or the frequency factor. To do this we're going to have to take the Kelvin temperature, determine 1 over the Kelvin temperature, take the rate constant determine the natural log of rate constant and an Arrhenius plot, as you recall, is a plot of the natural log of the rate constant as a function of the 1 over Kelvin temperature. So these data were provided. We can calculate these data in Excel as I did and then plot the natural log of the rate constant as a function of 1 over Kelvin temperature. When we do that, we get a slope that is equal to negative Ea, the activation barrier, over R. And we get a y-intercept that is equal to the natural log of the frequency factor, or the pre-exponential factor. So first, by graphing, we can get these two numbers so we can then calculate in B. So what we can do then with the uh, information that we have is let's answer A and then we'll go back and finish B. A wants us to know um, what the order of the reaction is with respect to each reactant. We were given another table of uh, initial rates. We recognize that the rate constant in the second table that we were just referring to has uh, units of 1 over molarity second, so that means the overall order of the reaction needs to be 2. Then when we look at the table with the initial rates, we notice that when we double the concentration of each reactant, we double the rate of the reaction. So that means it must be first order with respect to each reactant as opposed to second order with respect to one reactant and zero order with respect to the other. So now let's finish B. I mentioned that negative Ea over R, R being 8.314, was equal to the slope of the line, which was negative 7,751. So rearranging this equation, we can solve for Ea, which is 64,400 joules, or 64.4 kilojoules. The natural log of A was equal to the y-intercept. So if we take the anti-natural log of both sides, then A becomes 1.95 times 10 to the 8. Now for part C, they want us to calculate the rate when we have concentrations of one reactant, methane, at 1.8 ppm and concentration of the other reactant, ozone, at 5.0 ppm. To calculate the rate, we can use the differential rate law. Rate is equal to K multiplied by the molarity concentrations. We are not given molarity concentrations, so we need to calculate molarity concentrations from ppm. We were also not given the rate constant at 273 Kelvin, so we need to calculate the rate constant at 273 Kelvin. To do that, we'll use the Arrhenius equation, natural log of rate constant at one temperature divided by the rate constant at another temperature. This rate constant value comes from the table. 
So that then will be equal to our EA over R. Sorry, this, this rate constant was at uh, 275. This rate constant is for 273 that we're attempting to calculate. So when using this uh, e equation, Arrhenius equation, this format, the first K corresponds to the last temperature and the second K corresponds to the first temperature. So then we can finish our calculation. Remember your log rules, natural log of K1 now uh, minus natural log of what's in the denominator will be equal to what this whole thing is, negative 2.06 times 10 to the negative 1. So the natural log of K1, or the rate constant at 273, is negative 9.29, or 9.27 times 10 to the negative 5. So now we need to convert the PPMs into concentrations. PPM means parts per million. So if we have uh, 5 PPM, that means 5.0 times 10 to the negative 6 liters per 1 liter. Because we are assuming STP, then we can convert the liters of the gas at STP to moles of gas using the conversion factor 22.4 liters per mole. This will then give us the moles per liter or the molarity that corresponds to the PPM, 2.23 times 10 to the negative 7. We'll do the same thing for the other reactant, converting our PPM into molarity by using the definition of PPM and the relationship between moles of gas and liters of a gas at STP. Now we have our two concentrations. We have our rate constant. We can calculate rate. Rate is equal to K multiplied by each concentration raised to the first power because we determined up here that it was first order with respect to each concentration. This then gives us 9.24 times 10 to the negative 19 molar per second as our rate. Now for part D, we want to know what the half-life is. Well, the overall order of the reaction is second order, first order with respect to each reactant. So we need to use the second order half-life equation, but the second order half-life equation has a rate constant in it. It wants us to calculate the half-life at 323 Kelvin, and if you go to the table that is provided, they don't give us the rate constant at 323, so we need to do something similar to what we did here and calculate the rate constant at 323. Natural log of rate constant at 323 over some other rate constant the, at a temperature we'll choose, this will be 275, is equal to activation energy over R multiplied by 1 over the temperature that corresponds to this rate constant, 275, minus 1 over the temperature that corresponds to the first rate constant that we're uh, calculating. We'll then use our log rules and separate this into natural log of K1 minus natural log of 0 0.000114, and then set that equal to this entire side over here. Then um, when we su subtract this from, or actually add natural log of 0 0.00114 to both sides, we'll get natural log of K is equal to negative 4.89, or K is 7.50 times 10 to the negative 3. Then we can use the half-life equation for second order reaction. Half-life is equal to 1 over K at the temperature we're considering, multiplied by the concentration, both in the denominator concentration that they give us is 5.0 times 10 to the negative 7. This then gives us a half-life of 2.67 times 10 to the 8 seconds, but we're still not done because they want us to determine the half-life in years. So we simply need to convert our seconds into years, and when we do that we get 8.46 years.